This is a vector drawing exercise showing you how to draw the vectors for the banner that you can see here. We're mostly going to look at how we can use the polyline tool. We'll show you how to edit vectors using the powerful node edit tool and ultimately the vectors that we're going to create will be used to model a banner using the two rail sweep function in Aspire in a separate tutorial. So let's have a look at how we created this. So we'll go to File, Close. So we'll begin by creating a new file. So here we're working with a single sided job. The width of this is going to be 18 inches. The height that we're working with is six inches. Material thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. We'll set the Z zero position on the material surface and the X, Y datum position can go in the center of the job there. We can go ahead and press OK. So as we're creating quite an organic shape, there really is no need for me to have the smart snapping option switched on. So I'm going to turn that off. However, I'm going to keep the geometry snapping switched on as I will find it useful to snap to basic geometry in my job, like the center of the job, center of objects and endpoints. Um, one other thing that I'd like to look at before we go ahead and start drawing this banner is my snap radius. So if you go to edit, snap options, or you could use F4 as the shortcut key there. Um, and I'm just going to reduce my snap radius from the default of 10 pixels to 4 pixels. And really, I just want it at its lowest so it snaps exactly where my cursor is. And this is just uh, what works for me in this kind of drawing when you're drawing organic shapes. So if you yourself, have a play around with the settings to see what you find most comfortable. So let's go ahead and press OK. So now we're ready to start drawing the banner. So to do this, we're going to use the polyline tool. So here I'm going to snap to the centre of my job at X0, Y0 and I'm just going to roughly sketch in a shape like so and then right click to come out of the polyline tool and there is my basic shape that now requires editing to really give it the curvature and flow of the banner. So to do that we're going to go into node edit mode. So we're going to start by box selecting all of these nodes. So to do that, use the left mouse key. And you can see we've got that dotted rectangle. This is our selection box. When I let go, all of those nodes within that box will be highlighted. And then I can press S on the keyboard. S is the shortcut key to smooth a node. Okay, so now what I can do is I can look at moving the nodes, I can move the control handles, I can drag the spans um, in a way until I'm happy with the overall look of our vector. Okay, so to start with, let's take this handle. I'm just going to bring this down like that. Uh, then what we could do is we could take this node, bring that down, pull this handle up could take this span just bring it down if you didn't like what you just did you can press ctrl z to undo that if you want to insert a point you can right click use the option to insert a point or the keyboard shortcut is i and then we've got a point in there which i can then take the handle drag that across so we're creating more curvature in there take this handle move that over if ever I want to look at what I've got without seeing all of the nodes and the control handles, I can just click in the white space to see uh, what the vector looks like and then click back in just so it can see all the nodes. So with this ribbon, uh, when we get to the center, um, I don't want there to be any discontinuities as it travels through the center here. At the moment, we can see our control handle is going under. Therefore, the vector is coming up and to the node. Ideally, what I would like is to align our control handle with the node along the Y axis. And so to do that, I'm going to select it and press Y on the keyboard. And the reason for that is I'm ultimately going to create a mirrored copy of this over to the right hand side. So I want a real nice seamless transition right through the center there. And so aligning the nodes in Y will enable me to do that. Okay, so continuing on, um, we're just going to keep tweaking and changing, moving these nodes um, until we've got something that we feel we could go ahead uh, and start 
looking at the rest of the drawing. Okay, so I'm just going to click in the white space to take a look at what we've got. Okay, so one thing I would like to do is just make this S curve a little bit closer together. So to do that, I'm just going to go back into node edit mode. Uh, I might just bring this node up slightly and pull on the handle. I could even take the actual span itself and move that over. Uh, then we could maybe bring this in could look at just turning this over slightly take this handle just move that over to the left maybe bring this down and click over in the white space just to take a look at that again just to review what you've got and again let's just click on there I'm going to bring that one over shorten uh, the control handle there just to bring that curve in uh, ever so slightly uh, might want to just nudge it up and then take a look at this curve here sorry this span just nudge that up pull on this handle over here click in the white space to take a look at what we've got and click again just to take a look at your handles okay so this isn't too bad kind of getting somewhere uh, that I'm starting to be pleased with so if you click in the white space again then click on the nodes okay so um, this I think is going to work so I'm happy with that and you, as you can see it is a very iterative process of just making minor tweaks and changes uh, until you've got the curvature and the flow that you are after and so with that complete we're now going to put that into selection mode we're going to look at creating a copy of this up the y-axis to create the top portion of the banner so to do that we're going to take this and we're actually going to create a copy of that so we're going to use the copy option there then we're going to come over to transform objects and we're going to move this object and we're going to move it relative from its current position and we're going to go up the y-axis by two and a half inches press apply and then we can close out and then paste in the original vector and there we have the top and bottom portions of the banner. So to quickly show you how the banner is going to look I'm just going to draw a series of lines with the polyline tool. So I'm just going to click here and then follow that down to that point there. Space to enter out to create a new line and then click here and then we're just going to click at the bottom there. Space to enter out and then here to the bottom that matches their space and then on the ends like so okay, and so the idea of this is that we have this top portion that's going over and then underneath that we're going to have this area here so this section is going to go under and then it's going to lift up and go over that's going to sit on top of this portion here that kind of uh, goes down and then raises back up again and then on top of that we've got the last part of the banner that just sits over on top of this underside so that's pretty much uh, the basics of the banner setup but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at editing the shape of this uh, for a better perspective and I'm going to keep these lines in just to help me visualize how the ribbon will look. So let's select the top vector here we're going to put that into node edit mode. I'm just going to box select these nodes here and then just using my cursor, I'm just going to drag them in a little bit. Then we're going to box select these nodes over here. And we're going to bring those into the left a little bit. Okay, so then what we can do is if I drag a box going from the bottom right up in the top left motion, anything within that selection box will be selected when I let go so you can see that I'm able to view all of the vectors and their nodes and the spans. So here I can easily just go and line these straight lines up just so we can better see how the banners look in with those changes and if we just click in the white space to take a look at the curvature. Okay so here I'm just going to make a few more edits I'm just going to bring this uh, over a little bit take that handle nudge that up take the span maybe nudge that up 
click into the white space to take a look at how it looks and I'll just keep making these small tiny edits until I'm happy with the overall look of the part and as I said earlier it is very much an iterative process um, as well as it being uh, on a personal level how you like the look of something so there really is no right or wrong way of doing this uh, it's just until it looks right uh, or you're comfortable with it then that's when you can move on to the next stage so let's take a look at what we've got there Okay, so that's not too bad. Just gonna make a few more edits. I'm going to take this node here and just bring that over. I'm also going to look at just pulling on this handle to bring that up. Just click in the white space again to take a look. Just put that over there. Click back out just to see it without the nodes being displayed. And take this one, I'm just gonna nudge it down ever so slightly and then with the handle there, I'm just going to pull that down, pull this down, I want this to kind of become further down there so it looks like it's tapering in and then we'll take this node here, just bring that over to the right a little and we'll look at joining that up, click in the white space to take a look there. Okay, so I'm pleased with what we've got there. So if we right click to come out of node edit mode, I'm going to select this vector here, shift and select the other straight lines, the connecting lines, and then using the delete key on the keyboard, I'm going to delete them as I do not need them anymore. So the next stage in creating the vectors for the banner is looking at cutting the apex of each one of these curves. And the reason uh, that we're going to do that is we're going to look at joining them from top to bottom to their corresponding curve um, to create closed regions that we could then use to crop components back to once we've modeled all of the parts in a later tutorial using the two rail sweep. So to do that, I'm just going to select this vector, shift and select this vector, and then we'll go ahead and use the node edit mode. Okay, so using the scroll on my mouse, I'm just going to zoom in uh, so we can see this a little better, and then we're just going to roughly apply cuts to the apex of each of the curves. So I'm going to hover over this area here, right click, use the option to cut vector, hover over this point over here, right click, cut the vector, hover over this point over here, right click to cut the vector there, then turn this vector on okay, by clicking on it just to put it into node edit mode and then here we're going to press C on the keyboard for cut, that's, remember that's the keyboard shortcut to do that, C to cut there and then over here C to cut over there. So now we're left with four separate vectors on each one uh, of the top and bottom uh, parts of our banner. So the idea now is we're going to look at joining them using straight lines to their corresponding curve to create those closed regions. So to do that let's just put this in normal selection mode and we'll use this option here to zoom view to active limits. Okay, then we're going to take this vector here, shift and select this vector here, and over into transform objects, we have a tool, join and close vectors with a straight line. You can see that it's done that for us. We're then going to select this vector here, shift and select this vector here. Using the same tool, we're going to join that with a straight line. Okay, so here we can see that's not what I was expecting. And what the software's done when we use this tool is it joins it to its closest point, which we know that's not what we want in this case. So if we go ahead and undo that join there, and in this case, we're going to have to manually join uh, the vectors ourselves. So we're going to go into the draw a polyline tool. We're going to snap to find the apex, which we can see there and then we'll snap to find that one there, right click, then we can hold down shift and select that curve, and then we could look at using this option here to join vectors by moving endpoints to a common point. 
shift and select this vector here and again we could right click this time and use the join vectors tool move endpoints and then we could look now at joining with a line so again we could right click on that vector join or close vectors with a line okay so now we have two regions we've got one and we've got two there so let's take this vector here shift and select this vector here join with a straight line join with a straight line this vector here this vector here and then we could join with a straight line and again its closest point is over here which again is not what we're expecting so let's undo that and instead we'll just look at connecting the two endpoints there and then we'll join these two vectors. This time we'll look at using the join open vectors tool. At this tolerance, we're going to have one open vector after we join that. So it's closed. We can see it's joined that there. And I can finish it out off by using the uh, join with a line option. So now we've got the one, two, three, four separate regions joined up. So I'm going to make one final edit to the shape of the banner and that's purely on this last fold here. So here we're going to put that into node edit mode and what I'd like to do is make it look more uh, ribbon like, more flag like. So I'm going to take the uh, center point here, the midpoint of that span and just bring that in. Then right click and we'll bezier that span and then just pull the handle out just to give it a little bit of curvature. Right click on this span here and also uh, look at the bezier option here and just pull that out ever so slightly and bring that down. Click in the white space to see how that looks. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, so you can see it looks more flag-like. So this is uh, the look that I am going for. And I think there we have our finished um, overall shape for the folds of the banner. And so as I mentioned earlier we'll be using these vectors to crop components to that we will create in a later tutorial where we we'll use these vectors to model the banner using the two rail sweep function. So the two rail sweep function requires me to have a set of rails along with a cross section that we're going to sweep between the two rails to create the z height in the model. So we're going to look at drawing up the cross sections for the banner now. Now when we draw the cross sections, we've got to draw them and imagine that we're looking up the y-axis, what the profile would look like. So we're going to start by drawing out a rectangle. So I'm going to roughly sketch in a rectangle over here that's roughly the same width as our first fold. So we're creating the cross section for the first fold. And I can see, looking at my cursor, I have a height of half an inch, which is exactly what I'm going for. I might need to move that out a little to the left. So like I said, we're roughly trying to get the width of the first fold. Okay, and I'm going to let go, and there is our vector. Let's close out. So when we draw any cross sections, uh, we must make sure that they're open vectors. So with that vector selected, let's go ahead and put that into node edit mode. Right mouse click, I'm going to use this option here to delete the span. And now we're ready to transform the shape of this cross section. And again, it's as if we're looking at the banner on its side up the Y axis. So we're going to take this node here. Using the down arrow key, I'm just going to nudge that down. I'm going to right click on this span and use the option to put that into a Bezier span. And take this handle, I'm just going to pull that up. And then we're going to create this curvature here. Now with this curvature, I want it to go in and then I want it to go flat into this node. So again, uh, like I mentioned before, with uh, these areas of our banner, we want to really create a, tr a smooth transition going through the center here. So when we mirror it over, uh, it's seamless. So to do that, again, select that node and press Y on the keyboard. I'm going to take that node and again I'm just going to nudge it down a little bit and I might take this handle and just pull it up and click in the white space and there we have our first cross section. 
And so it's starting flat in the centre here and then it comes down at a taper like this. And then in terms of looking at the overall banner, where we come to the next fold, which is this area here, we want that to sweep around and it's going to go back on itself. So we're going to take advantage of the cross section that we've just made and we're going to make use of it in creating our next cross section for this fold here. So to do that, let's right click to come out of node edit mode. And then we're going to go into normal selection mode, select our vector, select it again to put it into transform mode. We're going to hold the control key down and we're going to take the right hand side, the middle transform handle here. I'm just going to drag it in, still having control held down and control will enable us to create a copy of that cross section as we're moving it. Okay, so we want to create the width of this roughly the same width as that fold. So somewhere like this will do. And there is our newly created cross section. Okay, so now we need to really edit the shape of this um, so that it looks as though it's swooping underneath and it's going to go back up again just as we see it here. So it's going to go down, it's going to swoop back up and then come back down on itself. So if we just zoom in on that area, so using the scroll of my mouse, if I scroll the mouse away from me, it enables me to zoom in to my job. Okay, so with that selected, let's go and put that back into node edit mode. First off, we want to take this handle, we want to bring it down, we want that to sweep underneath. We don't want any of this vector to come over our first fold cross section. The reason for that is that if we eventually use this vector for instance uh, to model the second fold, that second fold will appear through our first fold so we need everything to sit underneath here. So to do that we're going to take that node and we're going to use the down arrow key to nudge it down. Then what we can do is we can take advantage of the span uh, being in a bezier mode. We can take the handles, uh, move them around to really transform the shape and curvature of this cross section. So I'm just going to select just the, the handle here. I'm going to pull this up and that's going to create a nice curve for us there. Again, we don't want that going over uh, the first fold, we want to keep that underneath but we still want to really maximise the curvature there. So we've got a nice curve going down, it's swooping back up and then it's going down again. If we want what we could do is align that uh, with the node like so. We've got a nice down, up and down motion there. Okay, so that uh, completes the second fold for our cross section. So now we could go ahead and look at the third fold. So again, we're going to use this cross section as our base. We're going to create a copy of it, stretch it out to roughly the same width as this fold here. Uh, so with that selected, I'm going to hold down control. This time we're going to take the left hand side and we're going to pull that out somewhere around there. And there is our copy. So in node edit mode, I'm going to take this handle, I want that to sweep underneath, okay? So I'm just going to take that handle, I'm just going to bring that right down. So you can start to see the curvature here. We're going from the centre, coming down, and then we're turning right, but going in a down motion, sweeping it back up again. And then we're going down to the left and sweeping it back up as we can see in the curvature of our drawing here. Okay, so that's okay for that one. Just to make note here that uh, we have a little bit of depth there. So you don't want this area coming lower than the bottom of the leg, uh, otherwise you'll be creating a negative shape. So you want to make sure we still have enough thickness there. So last cross section we need to create is for this fold over here. So we want to make a rounded fold that sits on top of this fold here. So if we right click to come out and then we put that into selection mode, select our vector, select it again to put it into transform mode, hold down control, 
take the transform handle on the right hand side we're going to move that over roughly the same width as the last fold like so n for node edit mode and if we just zoom in over here we want to make sure that this is sitting above um, the fold that we've just created so take that handle bring that up like that you may want to take that point there using the down arrow key bring that down also we could look at taking this handle bringing this down also okay so I notice this is quite high here you can comparison to the center of our banner so we might want to look at reducing uh, the overall height uh, of this fold here so we could just look at bringing that down using the down arrow key like so then we're going to take that handle and then we could just move it up just to lift that up again we want to keep height at the lowest part over here and then we can take this a cross section here take that node bring that down also and then we could look at taking these nodes here and then just drop those down ever so slightly so we've got something that looks like a fold as if we were looking up the y-axis okay so I'm fairly happy with what we've got there um, we haven't gone over anywhere that we should that we shouldn't throughout the different cross sections we've maintained depth along the bottom uh, so that we should have material there when we come to model the part so let's use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits so taking a moment just to review what we have here so we have our cross section that swoops down goes back up again and down and then up and finally it comes down again this is looking at our parts if we were looking at the y-axis so that's our cross sections complete we have all of our cropping components we've got closed vectors one two three and four okay so i haven't closed this one off so we'll use the close with the straight line there so we've got all of our cropping vectors there the last thing that we need to do is look at creating the rails for our two rail sweep and so drive rails are just lines that go on the edge of each one of our folds that would then use our cross section to sweep between the two rails in order for us to create uh, the z height which replicates the shapes that we're seeing here so to do that we're going to look at using the polyline tool so i'm going to put in a precise point to begin with of x 0.01 and then y will be negative 2 press add and you can see it's added that for me so i'm going to go straight up here i'm just going to follow that vertical line click to accept that right click to come out and there is our first rail so it covers the entirety of this fold here and if we zoom in you can see that it's a fraction to the right uh, and the reason for that is that we want to just keep that clear of our cropping shape so let's go over to the polyline tool and we'll look at creating the drive rails for the other uh, cropping shapes Okay, so I'm going to pull that down. See, we've got a nice gap between the two there. If I wanted to, I could just bring that in a little more. Okay, so that's good. Back into the polyline tool. Again, we're going to look at creating uh, this rail here. So we want to make sure that our rails uh, are long enough that they cover the entire fold. And that they're as close to the fold as possible but still keeping a very small gap uh, in order for us to clear the cropping shape okay we'll come over here and we'll look at creating the rail for this side space to apply that and then the final one come over here and we'll look at applying that shape there then into node edit mode you can see that I'm actually intersecting into uh, the final fold there so I'm going to take that node nudge it over to the right hand side and there is the final rail so we now have four rails we have four cropping vectors and we've got four cross sections 
So that completes this exercise on how to draw all of the parts to model the banner. So let's go ahead and save the file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, we're going to call this one Banners and Ribbons Vector Drawing. Press Save, and you can access that from your Project folder.